I went to Georgetown University in DC and studied finance and when I graduated uh, I came back and joined my father's business. The business uh, predominantly was a trading business in the, in the sense imports and exports. Until today we are one of the largest trading houses in Eastern Central Africa. And when I say trading, I mean soft commodities, everything from sugar, rice, fertilizer. Over time I realized that there was becoming a very small margin business. And the so it was a volume business essentially? Very much so. Big volume, small margins. So while I was importing edible oil, I said that why should I not go into edible oil refining? similarly with soap manufacturing. So over time I have built uh, almost over 30 industries. So I'm into edible oil, cooking fats, margarines. We got into detergents, we got into toilet soap. So I'm into grain milling, wheat milling, maize milling, rice milling. So I'm glad to say I've managed to corner the Unilevers and the Procter and Gambles. Uh, of this world in, in that region in terms of market share. Were you able to win over market share or were you just able to distribute into areas where you didn't see this kind of penetration? No, so they didn't have a presence. Uh, so what they, they were doing is they were manufacturing in other countries and bringing in their goods into Tanzania. So I decided to go and manufacture in Tanzania. So I have an edible oil refinery that's 2,150 tons by the port. This is the largest edible oil refinery at a single point in Africa. So efficiencies, one. Two, my distribution. I've got over 100 outlets countrywide, over 2,000 vehicles. So what I do is I reach the hinterlands of the country. And now finally we're taking uh, Coca-Cola with our own brand called Mo Cola. We're fighting Red Bull with the Mo Energy Drink. Uh, and similarly, like they have Fanta, we have our own generic brands like Mo Chungwa and Portello and so on and so forth. So does this mean that Mo Cola is going to become an Africa-wide brand? Coke and Pepsi have been there for 60 years in Tanzania. So it's not easy for people to just change from Coca-Cola to Mo Cola. I've managed to get about 3.5% market share. So, you know, I'm limiting myself in, in the sense if I take 15% market share, I'm going to be in the money big time. So let's see what happens. For a very long time, we talk about Africa producing a wide range of raw materials, but processing has always been the problem, the value-added side of things. What kind of opportunities are you seeing within the space? So I'll tell you something. I took up a huge business of textiles. I always used to ask myself that we have cotton uh, in Africa, we have cotton in Tanzania, we have reasonably cheap labor, reasonably cheaper power, at least in, in Eastern Central Africa, uh, compared to, let's say, China or India uh, or the US. So today I have four textile mills, three in Tanzania, one in Mozambique. I do ginning, I do spinning, I do weaving, I do processing, mercerizing, printing, dyeing. Now I'm going into knitting and garmenting. I produce 100 million meters of cloth a year. 100 million meters is 100,000 kilometers of cloth. And we've been successful. Another area I want to touch on where we've done very, very well is agriculture. Okay, so, you know, ropes and twines. You know, so sisal makes ropes and twines. So it is a very strong fiber. I'm making so much money because the cost of production is $700. Today we're selling it $2,100 a ton. Interestingly, you're not in hard commodities and you've just focused on soft commodities. Why? Why? Uh, few reasons. Uh, one by default, because you know you need. You're probably to smiling yes, now because yes. the commodity cycle was very, working very, against very all of those. So. Very much so. You know, you 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 need a lot of a lot of capital, and one of uh, the disadvantages that we have in Africa was to raise capital. Now, you know, when I came back from university, that was the first problem I faced. I was like, listen, I want to invest, but if I at that time I went to Barclays Bank, Barclays paid up capital was $10 million. The maximum they could lend to one customer was 20% of the core capital. So they would lend me $2 million. So I realized this, how am I going to grow? This is when, you know, I had to wear a suit and come to South Africa and try to tell them about these stories that, you know, I want to grow my business. It was very, very difficult, uh, you know, starting to raise money from 5 million, 10 million. Last year we raised uh, over $200 million. So it's been a journey. So capital, and that two medium-term and long-term capital is still a challenge in Africa.